And tonight, a violent and chaotic situation in the Middle East continues to get worse. Two Navy SEALs are missing tonight after taking part in what was a critical mission to intercept a shipment of Iranian missiles headed for Yemen. Now, search and rescue operations are underway in the Gulf of Aden. Now, meanwhile, Yemen's Houthi rebels, they continue their attacks in the Red Sea, even striking an American cargo ship yesterday with a ballistic missile. And now, finally, Biden is pl planning to uh, once again redesignate the Houthis as a terrorist organization. Remember, he very generously removed the terror label shortly after taking office, even though they regularly committed acts of terrorism at the behest of Iran. At least Joe wasn't trying to give them billions like he was doing for the Iranian mullahs. This all comes as Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin is out of the hospital after nearly two weeks stay, and this that was not initially disclosed. By by the way, to anybody, it was eight days later that Joe Biden found out he actually had cancer, or I'm sorry, or actually had a prostate problem. Anyway, here with reaction is former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. We do wish him a speedy recovery. So we were told, oh, Great Britain and Joe Biden, they responded to the Houthi rebels. We find out later that at the most, maybe five people were killed. Now the Houthis are firing ballistic missiles at American ships, uh, and there's no response as per usual. Your reaction? Yeah, Sean, this is this is a problem that was a policy-driven problem. The Biden administration got this wrong from the outset. Uh, you're right. Um, they we we designated the Houthis a foreign terrorist organization. They now have had to acknowledge that. Whoops, these guys are really terrorists. They were firing missiles into Saudi Arabia. I remember Speaker Pelosi screaming at all of us because. They wanted to try and get food and aid in there when, in fact, what we needed to do was inflict a real cost on these very same Houthis that are now disrupting sea lanes, going to make food prices for Americans more expensive. And you you, you got it right as well. They, they fundamentally misunderstand this threat, whether it's, whether it's the Biden administration's efforts to restrain Israel when they need to destroy Hamas or the administration's effort to uh, just, you know, pinprick Iran when they're threatening the lives of Americans, 125-plus attacks on American interests in the Middle East. This is unacceptable. We can't let this happen. And you know, I'm praying for those two Navy SEALs. But this is precisely the kind of thing that happens, Sean, when America isn't strong and doesn't deter our adversaries. I, I, at this point, I just think all the world sees is a cognitively impaired, weak and frail president. And, and I've got to imagine, based on the fact that Joe never responds seemingly to any incident, that they, they think they have free reign. I have no doubt this year, while Joe is president, that, in fact, the reunification of Taiwan with China is going to occur, meaning they're going to try and take over an independent state. Uh, do you disagree with me? I hope I'm wrong. Yeah, I, I hope you're wrong, too. I don't know that they'll do it this year. But your core point, which is that these our adversaries see this moment, right? They can see that President Biden is not up to the task of defending American interests. They whether it was what happened in Afghanistan, where we had 13 Americans killed, or the invasion by Vladimir Putin into Europe. These are the kind of things that happen when America isn't on watch, doing the basic task of convincing our allies to defend themselves and supporting them when they do. Uh, whether, whether, whether Xi Jinping will actually move on Taiwan in the next 10 or 12 months, make no mistake about it. They know that President Biden's got another year. He may only have that, other, that one more year, and they're going to do everything they can to seize the leverage and the moment to make this next administration's job even that much more difficult. I, I honestly, you know, I've never been this concerned about the economy, about uh, what's happening in the country to American citizens, and I've never been this concerned about what's going on abroad. And if the adults like yourself are not put in charge soon, you know, I fear the very worst in, you know, a lot of parts of the world. We're now hearing about Putin's uh, potential to go after NATO nations after he's done with Ukraine. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, I've said since the beginning, Putin's intentions were deeper than just Kyiv, just Ukraine. He, he, had, he had bigger ambitions. The Ukrainians were able to stop him uh, with a lot of American help. So good on us for that. I know the, the bad guys are moving around pretty freely. We saw Chairman Kim make an announcement that he's no longer interested in unifying with South Korea. Dangerous times, Sean. Yeah, very dangerous. We need you back in charge. I know you've sacrificed a lot of your life serving your country. We could use you back in charge again. Thank you.